found a replacement thing for the thing I broke. Would you rather that or, or like, 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 is whatever, it? Whatever, just whatever. As long as it's functional. Okay. Ah, Shalom Aleichem. Here we go. We're in the Perak Hay, of the Hay of We're speaking about the Yichud Nifla. That learning Taira brings us closer to Hashem than any other thing in the world can. And it unifies us with God in a very, very special way. Um, Thank you. So look what it says. This Maila that learning Torah has is so great. Asher the mitzvah sidiyas ha the mitzvah of knowing Torah, the hasagosa, al kol mitzvah maisius, more than all the other mitzvahs. Even more than mitzvahs that are speech mitzvahs. And even more than the mitzvah of speaking Torah. By the way, there's two mitzvahs in Talmud Torah. What are the two mitzvahs? There's a mitzvah to say Torah. And there's a mitzvah of knowing Torah, understanding Torah. Understanding Torah. So one of the mitzvahs you can only do if you say the Torah, you have to, you have to enunciate it, you have to say it out loud. You have to say it out loud. The other mitzvah you don't have to say out loud, it's something that's happening in your consciousness. But the ultimate mitzvah is the mitzvah that's happening by both understanding it intellectually and then also saying it. That's why I don't learn Torah like a newspaper. You know, just sitting there like reading the times or something. You want to say the Torah, you want to read, you want to say the words. Very, very important to say the words out loud. But the mitzvah of knowing Torah is greater than the mitzvah of the speech of Torah. Ki ali they call mitzvah shavadi or maisa. Because remember, when you do any of the mitzvahs that are dependent on speech and action, Remember we said that a Kodesh Baruch Malbish Esanethish Hashem surrounds me because the mitzvahs have this energy that God comes and surrounds and this light comes and encircles me. It's not something that's physical, it's conceptual that I start to be awakened to this higher light. Kodesh Baruch Malbish Esanethish Umakifa Or Hashem Nerosh Vadragla and I get this light that because, remember, my neshama is engaging and is piercing into using this hand for mitzvah purposes. So God's light is now surrounding. I turn my whole being into like a chariot for God. By the way, the mitzvah, when we talk about God's light surrounding you, that light, of course, the Ora Makif, that's always when we refer to God's light as being something that's like above. The classic example is you go to a big tzavik and you see something like awesome, you go to a Chaim and you just feel like there's something very, very profound happening. So it touches you, that light, but you haven't integrated it. It's like so high, it's so big. I find most people experience this the first time they look at Ichimaru's Siddur. They're, they just, they think this is like out of a movie or something, or, or like some universe. And, 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 it's huge. Oh, you'll it's see. Easy. Not even the side. It, 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 it's inside. It's horomatic. It's just like, well, he's it's flipping every page back and forth, like every second. I think when Bear told me that the, 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 when things turned upside down and sideways, I've seen him do I think this. I remember Bear spit. The first time Bear said, like, I saw him going this, Bear was like, I'll never get this. And then I was thinking the pages are coming out and like taking swam on the shelves and like, I don't know exactly what, but something very big was happening. That's called Oramakif. Now, that light is very, very high, but you haven't integrated it. It's not yours yet. It does move you, but it, so to speak, we call surrounds you. Will be a deosat Torah, however, when it comes to knowing Torah, that's our parent. Knowing Torah, remember we explained yesterday, knowing Torah means you're ingesting it. It's not a surrounding light. It's an aura pnim. It's a relationship that goes in you. 
Besides the fact that my mind is being circled with God's Chachma, Hashem is being ingested, so to speak, inside of me. I'm ingesting God's wisdom. I'm not just putting God into me. And God and His prayer is all one. So if I'm ingesting God, just like the, the analogy of eating food. When you eat food, everybody knows this. Whatever language, whatever people you go to meet, whatever tribe or society, an anthropological adventure you find yourself on, every people have the exact same expression. And it is, you are what you eat. Everybody knows it. What you eat, besides the fact that it just integrates and becomes you, it's going in. I remember years ago, and I think a lot of the doctors have come a long way on this, that there was somebody that I knew that was, that was not feeling well, they were ill, and I was advising them in certain nutritional protocols, and when they told their doctor, the doctor said, oh, that won't do anything. You know, food doesn't affect you. So, so we were talking like, what do you mean? You put it in your body. Like, how, what else could, if that can't affect you, what can affect you? You literally ingest this thing and you immediately feel certain ways from it. Oh no, just keep eating junk food. Like, you don't need to worry about your diet. It has nothing to do with what's going on. So, thank God, the medical establishment has come a long way with understanding how to eat properly. But we know eating is integrated. Your cells are taking in that food and becoming one with that thing that you're eating. So imagine now doing that with Torah. Imagine ingesting Torah, which is God's wisdom, and it integrating into every one of your cellular, your whole cellular matrix. That is awesome. Whereas all the other mitzvahs don't have that effect. All the mitzvahs remain as this light that surrounds you, but they don't get integrated inside you unless you learn about the mitzvahs. That's what we mean that Talmud Torah connects with Kulam. Talmud Torah is the greatest mitzvah because the only one that has this quality that it can be ingested inside of you. And that's what it meant that when we said that Eliyah Novi, that Leis Machshav, Tfisa Bakla, that you can't grab except through Torah. Torah, you can actually grab and ingest God wisdom. Yes, there. Do all commandments uh, have to start at the Makif or not necessarily? That's a great question. The Makif is a greater light. It's, so to speak, a higher life. Less relatable. Less relatable. But it has a chisarn. And the chisarn is, is that it doesn't take, it doesn't get integrated into you. What's that word? means that, well, the, well, the deficiency of an or apinim is that, well, the deficiency of an or is that it doesn't get integrated. The maila of it is actually a greater light. That Sabbath's light is like, that's a very high light. The deficiency of the aura pnim is not as powerful of a light because it takes a location. The power of the aura makif is that it's such a big light it can't take a location. It's such a big light it can't take a location. One of the ways that I, that Tzemach Tzedek explained this in Derech Mitzvah Secha in Pruvu there is that you know you have an eye, your eyeball. Let's say you're feeling tired. So your brain like, you know, has this, this sign, it's, it's like, you know, out, out for lunch. And it, it's not like working so well, because you're tired. So the brain, the aura panim of your brain is not, it's not acting the way it should. Or let's say your eyes are not, not working properly because they're tired. So, the eyeball is the kli. The sight is the aura pinim. Sight is coming in. That's like the aura pinim. The eyeball is just a vessel for sight. Okay? But then there's the aura makif, which is a higher light that a person can say, I know that I'm tired, but afal pk, I need to draw a higher light and I have to drive now. I have to think now. I have to do something. And it can override that lower aura pinim. Because the Oramak is a greater light. The Oramak is, is very high in Ratsan. So you can pull down a higher light. Are you making it a Pnim? So it could be that you're making it a Pnim. 
Or it could be that I'm temporarily, like, it's like a toggle. I'm overriding the system. And really, I'm actually like riding an Or HaMakif right now. How do you ride an Or HaMakif? <laughs> <laughs> That, that it, it, because your rutzen is so strong that you should be thinking right now, or you should be like the, all the guys that went to the mail and sign. So I said, Go, but come back from morning session. So all the guys that like they want to just go to bed. So, but your or hamak is saying, But I, I know that I want to, and this is the right thing. So, really, my brain's not working, the or panim is not moving into the brain, my eyes, suck, my eyes are not seeing properly. But right now, I'm sort of depending on Or Hamak. I'm like living on the high of the tzaddik. I'm like, so it's not integrated. I can't do this every day. But as of for now, I'm like, that's called riding an Or Hamak. Okay? So Torah, though, is the only unique mitzvah that can become a pinim. That the Or can get integrated. And look, he, he's, he's so beautiful. Whatever he could grasp. Whatever you can grasp. Each person according to his brain, according to your Chabad, Whatever you can grasp, you know Pshat, go to Remes, you know Remes, go Drush, Soy. The deeper, the deeper, the deeper, the deeper, you're integrating God deeper and deeper and deeper into you. And the light is getting deeper and deeper, more integrated. And you start transforming from the inside out. And it's you. That's why when you go in Tyre, it's you. That's why it says in David Melch in the first parrot. It was Sayrasa Yegeyamam Valaila. But Tayra Sashem Khefzai. And the Tayra of Hashem will be his desire. Ubi Tayra Sai Yegeyamam Valaila. And his Tayra will be his thoughts all the time, day and night. So the Gemara says, well, first it says the Tayra is Hashem's. And then it says Tayra Sai, his Tayra. So, like, what happened? It was Hashem's Torah, and then it became Torah Sai. Look over there in the first paragraph, in the first capital of Tehillim. So what happened? So the Gemara explains, before you learn the Torah, it's Torah Sashem. It belongs to Hashem. But when you learn Torah, and you know it, it's not called Torah Sashem anymore. It's called Torah Sai. His Torah, your Torah, belongs to you now. The Torah belongs to you. Because you integrated it, became you. You know, you, you eat a bunch of uh, pomegranates. So, where did they go? Well, they're you now. They're you. Like, five, like where's the pomegranate? Okay, you know, which, which, can you please define where it is? It's, it's me. It's in all the cell of the matrix now. And it's interesting to note that it says the Torah was only give, given given for people that ate the mon in the midbar. The mon, we know, was totally integrated. There was no waste. You didn't have to go to the bathroom. Which means if you could understand what it means to ingest something totally purely, that a complete absorption, then you're ready for tayyub. Because that's going to be absorbed and become mamish one with you. And because when you understand the tayyub, it becomes encloped inside of you. That's why the Torah is called bread. The Mosein and Ephesh. The Torah is called bread. It says in the world to come that just like in this world, in Olam Haza, you can't live without food and clothing. You need food, you need clothing. In the world to come, Spiritually, you need food and clothing. In the world to come, your clothing are your mitzvahs, and your food is the Torah that you have. And just like clothing protects you from the elements, and food allows you to live, I mean, food's in a certain way more important because it's like life. The clothing is like a protective element. 
in the world to come, the clothing, i.e. the mitzvahs, is going to protect you from the intense shining of God's radiant light. You're going to be able to integrate it because you have the right clothing, the chaluk de But what you're going to be living on, literally what you're going to be, your life is going to be the Torah, which means if a person has a lot of mitzvahs, but no Torah, so he's not perishing, but he's not living on anything. So you want, you want both, and a lot of it. Just like physical bread feeds the body, when you put it inside of it, and the bread turns into dam and basar kibisara. Where is the loaf of bread? It's me. It's manish me. Va'az a He lives. The iskayim kam be the Next page. You're gonna live on the Torah. Va'has a gosu benefesh adam. Shalom the hatev. Look at this. It seems like there's a bit of a caveat. You have to learn it hatev well. Be ian sichloi. You have to learn the Torah well enough. Ad shenit pesis be sichloi misachedis imoy. You have to learn the Torah in a way that it actually absorbs. It has to absorb properly. People always ask me about certain vitamins and things. If the vitamins don't absorb, it's just expensive, excuse me, excrement. It's all about absorption, the carrier mechanisms, that it gets into the cells. So the guy's just learning Torah, but he never absorbed it. It's just like, yeah, I'm just going through it, but not getting it into the kishka. It's not being relevant. So then it was like food that was never absorbed. You hear that? That's why also Jews chew food. In one time in class, I'll be a chew Jew. Just chew. I, that's the first step of your digestive system. How do you absorb Torah? You're to chew it. Shinantan, the Venecha. Shinun halacha, you go over. Chazara. Chazara. That's chewing, it's chazara. So that sounds like it's a contradiction of what we said before, and that it should be able to that um, you should speak it out rather than think it, because if you're speaking it out, then you're chewing it and absorbing it, and that needs to you. So, yes, yeah, so speaking it out has a myla that it creates, we're going to see an oramakif, because that's its own thing. But the integration in a deep, deep way, by the way, Chazar can be in your head also. We want them to be together. But what we're talking about, the bread of Torah you're going to live on, is really how much you know, how much you understand God and His Torah. How much you, and that's why sometimes a person doesn't know how to speak doesn't mean he doesn't know. It could be he knows a lot. Moshe Rabbeinu had a hard time speaking. He knew. Sometimes people have so, too much to say. They just, they don't know how to express. Like if they would open their mouth, the Atlantic Ocean would just come out. How, how, did you, how do you get it out? There's so much there, but Sometimes that's some of the impediment. It's just, there's so much to express. But that's the aura penim, is the hasaga, not the speech. Let's just finish this piece. It becomes food for your soul. Look what's inside your intestines, your spiritual intestines. The source of life, God, and it becomes integrated like a, like food. Use the analogy of food; it's so deep. That the godly light that's inside the Torah that's now inside of you, because you integrated, you thought about it. And that's what King David said: that your Torah is in my kishkas. So the simple level of that is that even when I ate, I was thinking about you. That's how Rashi learns it. Even in my eating, it was also with Torah. I did everything according to the Torah. But the Balatanya says deeper. He says, and the panemius of that is, and it's almost more the simple. The Torah is in my intestines because I am, I'm eating the Torah. I'm literally integrating it. That's what King David was hinting to. Apisoy. That the clothing that you'll have in the Garden of Eden, 
this just opens up a whole new world. The food that you'll have for eternity is for those that were learning Torah Lishma. For its own sake, Kamosha Kosa Bazaar Yakil, that's Rachel Lishma. Look at the Priyat Chaim says, Lishma. The Baltanya is telling you what Lishma is. This is a very good discussion. Nevshachayim, Baltanya, this is a, woo, a big topic. But look at the Baltanya, it says, black and white. What is Lishma? Hainu. When I learn the Torah Lishma, I'm learning Torah to have an intimate connection to you, God. That's called Lishma. That by me understanding the Torah and integrating it into me, I will have an, the most intimate relationship with you. Because I can't separate you and the Torah for one second. Through understanding the Torah. That's why the Rosh Hashim always says this, that, you know, by the Chassidim, we always say, like, Zokta, Heilig, Rashi. Like, why do you have to say Heilig? Like, just say Zokta, Rashi. At one time, was around some Chava, they were like, Dani, is that a bit of tire to say the Heilig, Rashi? Because, is it Miyutu? You didn't have to say it. You're saying, right? Is it, is it a Miyutu to say the Heilig, Rashi? So... No, because that's, that's the whole Torah. The whole Torah is that it's, it's Halik. That it's, you know, where I learned, we'd say Zokta Shem. Like Hashem, you open the Gemara? Zokta Shem. Hashem says. Hashem's talking right now. The Hashem in the Torah is one thing. When you're in the Sugi, you're in it. But it's Hashem. Kamesh Kazu Priyat Chaim. Let's finish the pairing. Ve'amoz and Hibachinus or Penim. The... Food and the Taira is the or penim, the halavush and mechin is makifim, and the mitzvah is makifim that light that surrounds. But lachain anu chazal should tam the Taira shakol connected kol mitzvahs. And now we understand very well when we say the tam the Taira connected kulam, the tam the Taira is the greatest mitzvah. You have a very refined definition of that. It's the only mitzvah that's a penim. None of the other mitzvahs have that. But the value of tam the Taira is it's also one of the six thirteen. So it's also a makif. So it has what all the other mitzvahs have as being a makif that brings that light from beyond. But it's the only mitzvah that's a pinim that integrates within. That's what it's connected to Ulam. It's the greatest of all the mitzvahs because the only one that is a pinim. Lefisha mitzvah saying levush and levan. The mitzvahs are only levush. The atayri he mazam the gam levush. The nevish and askelos and islamish ba. The iyuna. The limuda. You see the chassidim also like iyun. The limuda. And all the more so that the Torah becomes a makif when you say it, the words. Look what he says here in Mamash Oymik. The Dibur, when you say it, because the Hevel Hadibur, because the, the mist of your, of your breath, when you say the Torah, not when you're reading like a newspaper, when you say it, or a makif, because when you say the Torah, the mist, that comes out of your mouth, forms these clouds of glory that surround you. Forms that or hamakif, that surrounding light. So at the same time that you're integrating it like food, that's going to be your food for all eternity, when you speak it out, it also becomes this or hamakif. The siyat deshmaya, perik vav, we're going to start an, uh, an in-depth exploration into the dark side, essentially the Sahara and what makes the Yates a hard tick? Have a... There's not the tools to fight him on me. Yeah. Oh, too.